if we take this spinning Lego wheel and pop it onto this feeder over here, and then gear it up with this 1 to 5 ratio, now we have a weak shooting mechanism. Then we can take a projectile like this knitting needle, give the wheel a quick spin, and when we feed our projectile into it we can transfer some energy from the flywheel to it, making it fly a short distance. But how do we turn this into something a bit more aggressive? Well, I have this brushless motor I made out of LEGO, which I've tested going over 40,000 RPM, which is about 40 times faster than a typical LEGO motor. And even at only a couple thousand RPM, we can get these LEGO lift arms moving at quite a speed. So this motor, I think, is the perfect driver for a repeating Whoa. bolt gun. Which might be a little overpowered for LEGO, but let's see what it can handle. Now to start with, I was curious how standard LEGO motors perform relative to each other. 12 FPS, that's probably about the best I can do with my hands. Let's see what an M motor can do with this 1 to 5 gear up. We can visualize the speed on this little meter, currently set to feet per second. 16.6 15.4 17 Okay, how about an L motor? This one is from Mold Kings, I think, so it might be a little faster than a Lego L motor. 20 20.9 18.4 And then what about the infamous buggy motor? These ones have good torque and good speed. Alright, let's see what the buggy does. Whoa! I think the tire's expanding a bit. Ah, whatever, let's give it a try. Whoa! 32. 31. And one last try. 29. As we can see, the buggy motor isn't bad, but you'll notice it takes a couple seconds for it to get up to speed, indicating torque probably isn't amazing with this gear up. And I want to drive two large heavy rotors for our shooter, and I want to be able to shoot semi-auto quite rapidly. Now the first issue I struggled with was the overall geometry of the wheels for the shooter. I want to use two on opposite sides of the projectile. Yeah, not enough friction. We need just the right gap between them. Way too big a gap. But if we bring one closer, still not quite enough friction here, and it's off-center. Some slightly bigger wheels, gap still too big. Some even bigger wheels, also too big. Again, I can move one closer, but this is too close. And some even bigger ones, same problem, gap's too big. And if I move one closer, now it's too close and off-center. So the best compromise I managed was this slightly overcomplicated geometry that allowed me to drive both wheels in opposite directions. And this time the gap was just about right for a standard LEGO lift arm. Now it was also quite a challenge to mount the projectile feeder in the middle of the wheels due to the slightly weird geometry I had to use. But it did sort of work. Now something else to note here is that larger wheels are preferred because they can move projectiles faster than smaller wheels at the same RPM. So this setup here does technically work, but something I was concerned about are all of the joints I had to use for this geometry. Yeah, this whole thing just doesn't feel very robust. I knew these gears and wheels were going to be under immense strain and vibration when going several thousand RPM. So the thing I'm concerned about is not only is this whole structure not particularly stable, the gap here is just a little bit too small and I suspect when this goes really fast and the tires expand, the tires might hit each other. So really, I think I need to make something a lot more stable than this thing. So at this point, I cut my losses and tried my hand at the largest wheels I could find. And this time, we'll make sure this is as robust as possible. It might not be the prettiest, but it should be strong. I did have to use some pretty odd gearing for the drive chain, but this geometry keeps everything very secure. With all of our gears nicely sandwiched, we can introduce our massive wheels. And these guys fit perfectly together with just the right gap between them. And this time, I'm making sure it can accept both LEGO and more aggressive non-LEGO projectiles. With our layers nicely secured... Oh, this is a hell of a lot more robust. We now need a feeder mechanism. And here we have it. It's simple, but when we pull the trigger, it pushes around forwards. Once we load her up... Each trigger pull pushes a projectile towards where the wheels will be. So let's introduce them to each other. For now, we'll just use LEGO lift arms as our ammo. 
Yeah, and off she goes. Or oh, something tells me I'm gonna have to lube up every one of these gears. Now, to run our brushless motor, I'm gonna use this little speed controller here. And to power it, we'll use this 11 volt LiPo. Alright, I think it's about time we introduce these two to each other. Let's chuck you upside down. Our single motor can simply drive one gear, which will drive both wheels in opposite directions. That should be pretty sturdy. Ah, lovely, this is nice and smooth. Okay, I'd like to give her a quick test with the speed gun, so to measure that, I'm gonna stick a little glue dot right here so we can track it. Let's give this a very quick try. Okay, we have something. Let's see. We'll just give her a gentle spin up for now to check that everything works. Holy! <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna give this thing a quick speed test, but I'm not gonna push it too hard because I haven't lubed this whole thing up yet. Okay, this is very low speed. If it stays still, that'd be great. About 1700 RPM at about 10% power. Okay, give her a little bit more juice. Whoa! Okay, easily just over 2000 RPM at maybe 15% power. And it seems to respond quite quickly to the speed dial, so talk looks like it'll be pretty good. And, uh, can it definitely shoot something? Even at these low speeds, it shoots a standard LEGO lift arm at quite a speed across the room. But you know what's more fun than shooting LEGO? Let's cut a knitting needle down to size using one of these small cutting wheels. I printed a small holder with a Lego axle attachment that the cutting wheel can snap onto. And with an axle connected, we can power it up using a Lego motor that's also geared up. Hmm, I was quite surprised how well this worked. So here's a sort of guillotine, and it's set up to cut a knitting needle to exactly the same length as a 15L lift arm. We pop a needle into it like so. Now these needles are very light, even lighter than Lego, but they should give us a bit more penetrating power. Unfortunately, because they're very light, they carry a little less energy. As you can see, my grindy guillotine was super effective. Hmm. And I totally didn't cut the rest of these using wire cutters. Let's see how it does with this very light knitting needle. Once again, just some low speed here. Hmm. One more time. Not bad. Okay, let's attach our LiPo to the gun. Now, more for the sake of portability, I'm only using an 11 volt LiPo, though the speed controller can take much more. But judging by how fast the gun is already, any more than this would be total overkill and would likely melt the coils in my motor. We'll give the handle a nice little angle. And we'll give you a trigger. Alright, let's neaten up these wires. I'm gonna stick the speed controller onto the battery here with a glue dot. I know this isn't the neatest, but I like to keep my contacts easy to disassemble and repair. Now to control the speed, I'd like to be able to use my thumb here. So I'm going to stick the speed dial on here with another glue dot. Now it should be easy to control from up here. Okay, let's see if we can get the overall concept to work nicely. Hmm, well the reloader works reasonably well. The rounds are tumbling in the air a bit, but that's to be expected I guess without fins or a barrel. Now the thing is, these needles are very light, weighing in at only 2.9 grams. Whereas this 3D printed bolt with a solid infill weighs in at about 6.5 grams. So let's print a bunch of them. Because of their extra weight, these guys will carry more than double the energy of the knitting needles. And they're a lot sharper. Now something I'd love to have on here is some kind of readout where I know exactly what speed these tires are moving at. And you know what? I have an idea that takes us back 25 years. I've wanted to use one of these beauties for so long. I remember this computer from my childhood, but never really got my hands on one until right now. This will be so handy for many of my future projects. I can't believe this thing still works after 25 years. The cables are just a little bit frayed, but it's not bad. Now the question is if this thing even works, so let's give this a quick try. And indeed, even with some mild cable fraying, there we go. this computer still works. Awesome. At 2100 at very low speed. 
Well, it looks like even at very low speeds here, we're still getting over 2000 RPM on the tires here. Now I'm curious, what does 2000 RPM get us with one of these 3D printed bolts? By the way, if you like experiments like these with Lego and technology, feel free to subscribe or drop a like. And my Patreon is linked below if you'd like to see more behind the scenes of how I make these things. Cheers! Well, wow, that's properly stuck in there. Not bad going. Okay, now I don't know what speed the speed controller can actually record up to, but let's give it a quick try. In theory, if I haven't stuffed up my calculations, 3500 RPM should give me almost exactly one joule of energy using my 3D printed bolts. Now I already know that this can go way faster, and using heavier rounds can output far more energy than one joule, but this speed here is perfect for what I want for now. Oh, it looks like we got about 3500 RPM. Alright, let's see what kind of speed we're getting when we're near to maxed out. Well, I'm pretty sure this is wrong because I hit it. Good thing these rounds are knockoff Lego because this thing got a little bit squished. <laughs> let's try that again and hope to hell I don't destroy the speed gun this time. Not too crazy, but if this thing was heavy and metal, that would pack quite a wallop. Okay, well now we know the whole system works, let's lube her up and make sure everything runs smoothly without wearing itself down. The first set of gears are going to be spinning at quite a few thousand RPM, and each shot is going to put strain on them, so I want all of this running buttery smooth. So I'll run this for a moment just to get the lube spread around nicely. By the way, don't mind the vibrations here, this is just the metal axle of the motor, which I forgot was touching the table here. Oh, the lube is working. Well, I can go way faster, but we got up to about 3,500 here. All right, the moment of truth. What can we do with these printed bolts? All right, we have lift off. Okay. Despite the tumbling, I was surprised how accurate the rounds were. Many of my previous shooters took forever to film due to how long it took me to accurately hit my shots from a distance. That's so incredibly easy to aim. And what sort of penetration power can we get at short range? Some nice little puncture wounds. Uh, Katie's agreed to sacrifice her Harry Potter cardboard box. Some of these rounds tumble a little, but the ones that land point first clearly have plenty of piercing power. <laughs> Thanks for your sacrifice. <laughs> I love that this thing allows you to just sort of spray and pray. This might actually be the most practical shooter I've made to date, with short reload times and a relatively rapid fire. Let's try a bit more distance. This is what? Seven meters? Even at long range, well, long for a Lego shooter. It's surprisingly easy to pop pots. There we go, two shots. Now, of course, these printed bolts aren't carrying crazy energy, but I'd love to try some metal bolts sometime to see what damage they can do. At least we still have enough here to plink bottles, though. I'm delighted to see the motor has enough oomph to keep the rotors spinning between each shot, allowing you to keep firing as quickly as you want. Alright, something a little heavier. Now I'm pretty sure LEGO motors wouldn't be able to maintain this speed and torque. <laughs> One of those bullets is definitely gone. I wonder though, can a printed bolt actually break a bottle? Yeah, if this was heavier or metal, it probably would break glass, but these bolts don't seem to do it. Overall, I'm really happy with the design here, allowing you to use safer but still powerful LEGO projectiles, all the way up to printed bolts that carry more energy and have better piercing power. Perhaps the next step is to source some metal bolts and see just how many jewels we can chuck at.